So I'm here at Neef 2024 with Lance Lucero from Celestron. Lance, we've got the brand new Origin scope here. Can you tell us a little bit about what Origin is? Yes, Origin is basically an eyepieceless telescope. It's a telescope that is designed to capture the faint objects that you cannot see from the city with a bigger telescope through an eyepiece. All right, yeah, so um, one of the, my favorite things about this scope, because I have had a chance to work with one, um, is just the ease of use and getting, you know, basically out under the night sky right away. Um, it takes care of almost everything for you. It sure does. Uh, basically, if you can just set it up, level the tripod, it, attach it using the three captured bolts, um, turn on the power, uh, within three minutes you're up and running, uh, the scope will move itself to the sky, it'll focus, it'll calibrate itself, it'll plate solve so it knows where it is, um, and then you simply select an object that you want to image off of either tonight's best list in the app or through the map interface. Just click on an object, tell it to go, scope will center it up. All you have to do is press the start imaging button and the scope does the rest. When, exactly. you, when it'll build up that image uh, on, your, uh, on your, your device so that you can see it as it builds and continues to stack. And then um, when you, you find it to your appeal, you simply stop imaging. It will then process the final image, process the stack, export it directly to your phone from Wi-Fi and allow you to share it with your friends. I have been doing outreach for many years, and I can see this is, you know, a great way to do outreach, EAA yes. style imaging, where you can, you know, share it to a phone or an iPad or even a TV screen. Yes. Um, so the live stacking ability, the internal, you know, image processing that's happening there, it's only going to get better, right? Absolutely. This has absolutely changed the way that I do public star parties. Um, what I find is that people want to get in line for the big telescope to look through the eyepiece to see a planet. Right. Planets are bright. Planets can be seen from the city. But there's usually quite a line waiting for that eyepiece for people to get their view. So why not have an origin set up behind the line? And you can walk up and down the line showing pictures of the galaxies or nebula that are right above your head that they would never be able to see as more than a faint smudge in an eyepiece. Right. It really brings it home that there's a lot more up there uh, than you could ever possibly see with the naked eye or even through a telescope visually. And with little kids, you don't necessarily know that they're actually seeing what they say they're yes. seeing. You have to like quiz them, like, do you see this? Or, and they'll yeah. say yes, and you'll be like, oh, well, I guess they're not seeing anything then because and now with this, you have it on the screen, you can point things out, you can describe it to them and you, you know the, what they're seeing. Exactly. Right, and, and you know, as a parent, uh, I think it's important that you, know, you feel comfortable with what you're looking at, and you know, with Origin, not only do you have that fast ability to get an image, it also has all of the information you could ever want to learn exactly. about the object right there in front of you. It's not only in print for some of the more popular objects, it actually has an audio recording that you can play and listen to on your device. Awesome. Well, it's capturing your image and displaying it to you. Right, and so you could be kind of just looking at it, listening to the, uh, the audio description and, you know, trying to take it in. What, what does this truly mean? You know, it's exactly. distance from you in light years, just how big it is. How big it That's is. the one thing that blows kids away is when you compare it to, when you talk about like a certain galaxy being so many light years, to them it looks small on the screen. But then you explain it to them like, a spaceship at the speed of light would take 100 years to get across it. Right. Their little minds. <laughs> the next closest star, Proxima Centauri, is like 70,000 years with our fastest spacecraft. With our spacecraft. fastest spacecraft, exactly. Right, right. So I, I love that it has that kind of capability to do what type of imaging that you would see in more advanced setups, but at the same time, the ease of use for someone who is just getting started. So exactly. you, you kind of have the, the full range and it'll grow with you. Absolutely, that's actually one of our, the pride and joys of this, is that this was designed for the beginner. Um, someone who's never experienced imaging before. Um, the app contains a tremendous amount of auto modes that you can set. You can do you know, auto processing, auto stacking, auto uh, enhancements, um, auto exposures. Uh, you have the ability to turn those automatic switches off 
right. and start experimenting as if this was a real imaging scope. Um, you and you can, can actually, pull a FITS file right off of it if you are a more advanced imager? Exactly. Even in auto mode, every one of the images, it is an option you have to turn on. Okay. But it will save all your raw files. Um, on the back of the tube, there is a USB port under a cover. You simply use a USB stick. And the, you can use the app to download those files to the USB stick, take it out, put it in your computer, use your favorite processing software, and play around with it. Right. So not only does it do the imaging and kind of teaches you how to do the imaging, it gives you control over the imaging, exposures, uh, sensitivity. Um, it also gives you the ability to experiment with processing. Look at the processing it did and see if you can do better. Right, I did a little bit of processing in the app uh, on the on the image that came out directly yes. from the scope, um, but I have yet to do the the pulling it off onto the computer. Yeah, uh, because the image that I'm getting is actually that good. It's great. It's already that good. Like <laughs> exactly. I, I don't really feel like I need to do that, but I can if I feel like I want to play with it. But it's not a requirement. And exactly, if it's a 10 minute uh, stacking, you know, automatically, I, I could take many of those and make. Even bigger stack. Uh, an even bigger stack, right. That, that, that's absolutely correct, and that's what a lot of imagers do. They'll take the same image, they'll take images over a period of nights and combine them. You right. can absolutely do that. Another thing, citizen science-wise, I mean, this is going to be connected to the internet. This is going to be something that's standard throughout all origin scopes. Yes. Right. So the ability to collaborate and work with others. And absolutely. You have the same focal length, the same equipment, and it should match up pretty well? At, that's absolutely correct. So, you know, looking forward into the future, the ability to like do citizen science and like to, you know, share with other people, push it out, maybe do some sort of a live. We had one gentleman who was doing or helping us with beta testing that actually used variable star curves. Oh, interesting. Um, and was able to plot it out with great accuracy just using a device like this. You get a lot of people doing the same thing. It just refines that data. Sure, sure. And when you're not dealing with different scopes, it makes that process so much more easily Exactly, because it, it's a one-to-one -one comparison. Awesome. Same sensor, same optical, optical tube. Awesome. Uh, you know, I see right now it's on the tabletop tripod too, so it's yes. compatible with that. It is. Uh, I just want to point out that this thing will actually ship with a full-size tripod. Um, the reason we did that, I noticed uh, some of the other scopes that are on the market have the small, uh, they, they come with small. Uh, we found that during our tests, even in my backyard in a suburb of Los Angeles, um, having it on the ground, I have a two-story building on one side and I have a, uh, a big tree on the other. And the lower you are, the narrower your sky is it visible comes. to you. So it helps if you can get it higher off the ground to lower that fence line and be able to see more of the sky. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have this great option. Uh, this was actually a tripod that we have for the uh, Evolution and the SE mounts. Uh, but it is perfect for this because this can be set if you're like out in the desert, you have a wide open field, you can just simply set this on the floor. It's far more stable um, as long as you know, you're happy with the amount of sky that's visible to right, you. Right, right. I did take uh, the travel tripod with the Evo 8 uh, on the Eclipse. Yes. Um, and it, it was <laughs> Perfect so for nice. Because it's so small, nice. it's lightweight, you can fold it down, you can throw it in luggage or whatever uh, and not have to worry about it. Um, just like you know, tra uh, transporting it in an RV when you're in the family, go on vacation. Exactly. Uh, it's great not to have to deal with that big tripod if you have a camp table that you can just set it on, or in this case, you don't even need to. You can simply set it on the ground. Right, and I really do appreciate the you know, thought process here. You know, there's a camera on the front easily ac you know, access, so as technology continues to improve, yes. you know, as camera technology grows, we can you know, look for upgrades that Celestron may offer in the future on that. Right? Absolutely, we designed it so that the camera would be easily replaceable. Uh, right now, we don't have any uh, things specifically that we can talk about, but yes, upgrades will be made as sensors improve over time, as they have been. Excellent, yeah, so you know, just in conclusion, you know, I, I have had one of these personally, and um, the first night out, I got it set up. In 10 minutes, I was connected to my home's Wi-Fi. Uh, I went outside, I brought it out, I set it up, turned it on, it found its way. Um, I, once I knew it was connected to my iPad, I went down into my basement studio and I was like, it works. And I just shared it with my TV and AirPlay and I was off to the races. Uh, within a few minutes, I had my first object, imaging. Um, I've been doing this for 15 years. I never took a picture of the Horsehead Nebula. Yes. I have no idea why. <laughs> it's always been right there. Yes. 
But a, a lot of people have uh, this this notion that it is extremely difficult. This thing makes it so easy. Right. I was just looking at it. I always go to Orion. You know, I'm always yeah. on Orion, and then I'm like, I completely forget about the horse head right next door. And here I was, you know, I was on the app. I was on the, you know, the the Origin app, and I saw a horse head there, and I was just like, you know what? I want to see it tonight. And I got my first ever picture of the Horsehead Nebula. Yes. Just because I wanted to. You know, and that, that was pretty and you know, amazing. The other cool thing, too, is that you do have the freedom of being able to uh, point at any point in the sky. In other words, you're not limited to just a, you know, a single uh, object by catalog number. Um, what I find is you can go to Horsehead, and we have either manual adjustments, or you can use our recentering tool. Uh, which simply allows you to put a crosshair on okay. where you want the picture centered. Nice. It'll slew away, slew back to it, so that you get um, the Leo trio of galaxies all in one field oh, of wow. view. M81 and M82 in the same field of view. Or the Horsehead and the Flame Nebula. You can actually get those in the same field of view with this, with this scope. Because it has the wide field Rasa optics. Exactly. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was able to then, after I got those, uh, I decided I was getting tired and I wanted to go to bed. So I said, okay, well, I'll set up a few other objects. And I went to bed, woke up in the morning, and there were like 13 or more objects. Exactly. You can set up the imaging list. It's really quite simple. Um, again, you can use auto settings where you can uh, actually change the settings for each object that you have in your list. And it will just go down the list one after the other. And then at the end of the session, it will turn itself off. Yep, yep. And, and I just used the default settings and the images that I got were, were great. They're incredible. And again, you can always play with those. You can experiment with longer exposures. But to be honest with you, um, all of the marketing material that you've seen uh, that we have on the video rolling behind us and the pictures that have been printed, uh, those are literally right out of the camera. No Photoshop was done after the fact. Uh, what you see is what you get. Those are right. legitimately great photos with no changes made post-production after getting them off of your phone. All right, man. So this is, uh, you know, an amazing scope. 10 years in the making, um, it just blows my mind <laughs> the, the planning <laughs> yeah. process that that took for you guys and the consistent drumbeat of innovation that was not seen by the public. Exactly. But now that we have this, it all makes sense. Exactly. Right? The whole story of how Rasa came to be with the intentions of using it in a, this type of a scope. Um, you know, I had Eric and, the, and Corey on for the podcast, and, and we kind of talked through that story. And it, yeah, it's, still, it's amazing. All the spinoffs that we had that have been so successful as individual pieces, yet were all pointed to this final goal. That just shows the dedication towards this new era, the origin the of origin. a new thing. This is not the end. This is, this is not the final product. This is the beginning. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lance. My pleasure. Truly appreciate it, guys. Always Celestron, always innovating, uh, even when they're doing it in dark mode. Uh, so we've got the brand new scope and please uh, continue to check out more on our website uh, as well as the YouTube videos to come. If you're still listening and like this podcast, please consider becoming one of our Patreon patrons. Memberships start as low as $3 per month with benefits including opportunities to ask questions of our guests. Also, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast to help us bring the universe even closer than you think. The podcast will be available every third Tuesday of the month.